it's one thing to say how much material is coming out. It's another to say how much of that material is gas and how much of that is oil. Understanding what the ingredients of that soup are is important uh, before you can make a final determination as to exactly how much oil was spilled. The next step was to use Jeff Seewald's samplers to go in and take a sample of the fluids coming out of the well. By analyzing the, the chemistry of the hydrocarbons, we could tell what fraction of it was uh, natural gas and what fraction of it was oil. This is uh, an isobaric gas tight sampler, uh, sometimes referred to uh, by others as the Seawald sampler. This is a device for collecting uh, fluids uh, at extreme depths and temperature uh, and, which, uh, and pressure. And what it does is it maintains the sample uh, at the pressure that it was collected at on the seafloor. That's a very sophisticated, specific sampling methodology um, that uh, the oil industry didn't have. It was not designed for an oil spill. It was designed for a hydrothermal vent. And you're not going to find them uh, in, a, in a catalog. That's sort of one of the strengths of, of Woods Hole is that we can push the limits of, of sampling technology and we identify new needs, new scientific needs, and then we have the, the resources and the knowledge base to, to make it happen. We were probably a couple miles away from the, where the blowout was. We drove over to a boat that was about 600 feet long, and they you know, snapped two lines on you and brought you up about six stories out of the water. The sound was deafening. The gas flare off from burning that natural gas from the oil well was so loud. We could also feel the heat from these flare offs. We were that close. It was such a surreal environment. Ships all around you and flames all around you and bright lights and helicopters. They basically said you have this much time and you're going to make this happen. We were watching the cameras and just watching the samplers go into the water submerged. You know, you see the ROV hit the water so it rattles a little bit and the samplers sway and then you just see the depth start increasing. And the whole time they were going down, I was talking to them, making sure that I still had communication. When the lights turned on and all of a sudden you saw this, this you know, this bubbling cauldron, it was pretty spectacular. So what we were seeing was the blowout preventer in high definition. It was unbelievable how different it looked from what you saw on CNN. To see how big that blowout preventer really is and how much oil was coming out was a little bit eye-opening. The uh, oil and gas were exiting at a very high temperature. We used a the thermocouple to guide where the sampler should go. The higher the temperature that we saw, that meant we were closer to the source or getting the, the true well fluids and not the seawater. To watch our sampler get stuck right into the middle of it, uh, watching it on like a big flat screen TV and you're like this mission control room, I'll never forget it. The first indicator that um, things were going right was when uh, Sean, who was at the controls, uh, uh, saw the, the increased temperature. It was a little bit of relief because we were relatively sure we had something in the bottle, but I wasn't gonna be happy until we got back and verified that the sample was in fact good. There wasn't much uh, high-fiving because we knew that, yep, we got, we got the oil and gas, now we need to get it out of the sample, which wasn't designed to separate oil and gas. There was a whole chain of custody uh, procedure that, that had to be followed. The samplers were uh, hand carried by the Coast Guard um, back to Woods Hole and delivered uh, to us. They were stored in a locked uh, refrigerator. When word got out that we were going to crack these samplers and do this separation, there were probably about 15 people in the room. <laughs> so there was a lot of people watching. Everybody knows that we're the only people in, this, in the world that have these samples. We got gas and oil coming out of the sampler into our separation reservoir. 
At first, it was a lot of gas. We saw the, the, the bag that we had connected inflating, and then we saw little drips of oil, and then we saw more drips of oil. There's the oil. Look at that. The thousands of compounds that are in the oil give you the fingerprint of what the oil is. And that can be checked against the composition of the oil that you find on a beach somewhere. That sample is, uh, without any question, the most valuable sample that was collected by anybody in response to this oil spill. We can trace what we see in the water column, and we can determine what's not in the water column based on what was in the starting oil, what happened to the rest of the, the oil that we don't see in the water column. I think those are all questions that will be addressed in the very near future.